You all have been asking this question for months, and that is Masterbuilt Gravity Series or Camp Chef Woodwind Pro? Well, guess what? I've got a cook today that we're gonna do on both of these grills to put them to the test. I've got two identical dino bone beef ribs. We're gonna do them identically on each of these grills, same temp, same time, everything, and we're gonna see which one does the best. Now let's get started. Now, I don't know about you, I've always had trouble finding the dino beef ribs. It's something that they don't stock locally here in Northeastern Ohio, or at least the places that I shop. So I hit up certified Piedmontese, and they come in a twin pack, two four bone racks of dino beef ribs. This is the perfect protein for this competition, the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro versus the Masterbuilt Gravity Series. The reason why I say that is we have two nice long cooks that absorb a lot of smoke and we're going to be able to see what kind of barbecue that these grills can make. Now when you get these beef ribs from certified Piedmontese, they're already trimmed up pretty well. They're cut square and they're each four bones. Now there really isn't a lot of prep. Now some people will shave this fat down, they will get rid of the silver skin and I will do a little bit of trimming just because there is a little bit of harder fat and some loose ends but for the most part, I am not going to touch these. First off, I saw this method on Meat Church Barbecue when he filmed some beef ribs with Goldie's Barbecue down in Texas. Now what they do down at Goldie's is they just don't want those sharp corners because that will burn first. So he just rounded off those corners and that's what we're gonna do today too. Now looking at these beef ribs, there is some harder fat here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that down a little bit. We've got a little bit of it here too, but I'm not gonna get rid of all of it because we know what the truth is, fat is flavor. It's gonna help keep these moist and that's really what we wanna do on these long cooks like these beef ribs. And check the backside. Now when it comes to beef ribs, there is a membrane just like you'd see on pork ribs. But the truth is you don't need to mess with it. All you gotta do is take a sharp knife and we're gonna score them. This is gonna help with the pullback, uh, but it's gonna also keep them intact. We're just doing a little diamond pattern there on the back. So this rack is basically ready to be seasoned. Now let's go over and do the same thing with this one. Now what I've come to love about certified Piedmontese is the fact that they have cuts almost every cut of beef that you can imagine. And these are cuts that are a lot of times regional and things like picanha that I can't find here in Northeast Ohio. So they've been my source for a lot of things like picanha, like these dino beef ribs that I just can't get my hands on. I'll put a link down in the description for certified Piedmontese. Not only do they have high quality beef, it is some super tasty beef too. Now for many people, they call these dino beef ribs brisket on a stick. And that's kind of how we're gonna treat this today. Now that we've got them trimmed up, I like to take a paper towel and just pat dry them a little bit. That's gonna help remove any excess moisture off the surface because I'm gonna be using a binder today and I wanna be able to control the moisture myself. Now today as a binder, I'm gonna be using olive oil. In all honesty, I use olive oil as a binder more often than I use any other binder. For me, I like the finish that it creates. Everybody's got their preference though, but I use olive oil more than anything else. I'm just gonna wipe a little bit on the back, even though we're not gonna be seasoning anything on the back today. Now that we've got the binder on these ribs, it's time to season it. Now today, I'm gonna be using one of my homemade rubs to season it. I'm gonna put a link down in the description, but it'll pair great with these beef ribs. The only thing is we're gonna call a slight audible, and I'm gonna start out with some coarse black pepper. That is gonna help produce some awesome bark. Now there is some coarse black pepper in my rub, but I want a little bit of extra. So get in there, and you're gonna wanna add this first before the other rubs. And if you know anything about Texas barbecue, the pepper is what builds that beautiful bark. Now I'm gonna come in here with my rub, which like I said, I will have the recipe down in the description, and I'm going to put a nice coating on this. I'll use the backside of my glove to help pat that in. We wanna make sure that we season all of those sides. The bone side really doesn't matter because we're not going to be eating the back side there. All right, 
and touch up anything we might have messed up while we moved it around. And we're gonna give these ribs a few minutes to sweat. All right, these beef ribs are sweating. It's time to get them in. We're gonna get a rack in here on the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. And as you can see, we've got a pan here with some Wagyu beef tallow. We're gonna be using that and smoking that throughout the day along with these beef ribs. Now, when you put these into the grill, you want the thickest side to be towards the heat. And then we're going to kind of offset it away from the heat source. We're gonna go ahead and get this shut. Now we're starting this out at one hour at 200 degrees in each grill. We're gonna do that for one hour because we wanna slap as much smoke on the surface of that wet and cold meat. Get in here to the master belt. And same thing, thickest side towards the heat. We're gonna get it as far away from the heat as possible. Get this closed. One hour, 200 degrees, we'll see you then. We are at the one hour mark with the 200 degrees on these beef ribs. Now we're gonna kick the temperature up on both of these grills. Now we've got these ribs on the upper position on these racks. I like to do that on long cooks because I like to keep it away from the heat source as much as possible. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these kicked up since we are on that upper position, which is gonna run a little bit cooler than directly on the main grate. We're gonna run this at about 300 degrees on these grills. Now let's do it. Now we're running the Camp Chef at smoke level nine. I like to go nine or 10 for most cooks when we're doing a lot of smoke. Got that set and we'll get over to the master built. Now one hour in, we wanna see how these are doing. Now I can tell you right now that the beef ribs on the Camp Chef have a lot of good orange golden color. So that smoke is hitting those beef ribs pretty well. Let's take a look at the master belt. You could see about the same, but I will say color wise, the ribs on the Camp Chef have a little bit more color. Got the temperature cranked up. It's time to just let these ribs go. Now we aren't smoking for time here. We're doing a look. We want the bark to get to a certain point before we touch anything else. We'll check in periodically and show you the progress along the way, because to be honest with you, this is the first time that I've even compared them side by side. I'm really curious what this looks like throughout the process. All right, we are about four and a quarter, four and a half hours in, and these are looking great. We've never spritzed. They're tender. We're reaching about 188 degrees. I'm thinking at about 190, we're gonna be wrapping them. These are the ribs in the Camp Chef. Literally have not touched them all afternoon. Let's go over here to the master belt and see what these look like. Also, never been touched. Got a little sunlight on them. They also look good. I will say the bark is not as pronounced and the color isn't as deep. Like I said, we're about four hours and 15 minutes in, four hours and 30 minutes in. We're at about the four and a half hour mark and these beef ribs are registering about 190 degrees. We're gonna get them wrapped up in some butcher paper. It's time to get them off. Let's start over here with the camp chef. Now I wanna do my best not to disturb these or disturb the bark. Man, do those look good. Now I'll come over here to the master belt and see what kind of damage we've done here. Now, I can already tell you I see some distinct differences. Let's get on over to the table, let's talk about them. These beef ribs have been in the smoker for about four and a half hours. Now it is time to get them wrapped now that they're about 190 degrees. Now I can tell you there's some distinct differences. The bark on the Camp Chef seems more defined. We also see more color, deeper, richer colors on the Camp Chef than we do from the master belt. Now these have been running, like I said, for the exact same amount of time using hickory wood. We've been running hickory in the smoke box on and off this entire time. And I've also layered hickory in the master belt about this much charcoal, then a 
few blocks of hickory, then that much more charcoal, then a few blocks of hickory. So it's been getting smoke throughout as well as smoke from that charcoal. I'm excited to see what these taste like when it comes down to it, but it is time to wrap them. So I've got some butcher paper here. And we're gonna get these wrapped. I wanna start out with that beef tallow. And I've got myself my silicone brush and that smoked beef tallow that we've had in there. And I'm just going to brush some of that on to the paper before I even set these ribs down. So I'm gonna take this first rack of ribs here and I am going to get them on here. This are specifically from the Camp Chef. And I'm just going to douse the top of the surface here with this Wagyu beef tallow. Now, start wrapping them. We've got the one for the Camp Chef wrapped. We're gonna get it back into the smoker. Now we're gonna do the same here on these master bill. Gonna get a nice, soupy coat of this Wagyu beef tallow from South Chicago packing. I'm gonna tell you guys, if you aren't using this stuff with your barbecue and your steaks, you are missing out. I've got a link down in the description. This stuff is incredible. I use it literally all the time. Now let's get to wrapping. All right, and we'll get these back in the master belt. Now for these beef ribs, we're looking for temperatures about 202, 203. We want that super probe tender, but we don't want them to the point where they're falling apart. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. We still are running the smokers at 300 degrees. And from here, it's just a waiting game. We'll check in when it's time and talk about them then. All right, so we're at about five and a half hours in. I just probed these beef ribs and they're sitting right around that 203 degree mark. It is time to pull them off. I'm gonna get them on this cookie sheet, leave them wrapped up. We're gonna get them into my oven inside to rest. We've got the oven set to the lowest temperature, which is 160 on my oven, and we're gonna rest them there for at least an hour. Let's go ahead and grab these off. Now, just so I don't forget, I'm going to mark these but this one's the master built. And that one is the camp chef. We're gonna get these inside into the oven for that resting period. We gave these beef ribs an hour to rest. And let me tell you what, my house smelled incredible for the last hour. It is time to get these pulled out, but we're gonna be doing something a little special today. From time to time, I'll get comments about, well, it's my opinion. I don't ever have anybody else tasting this. And because this is going to be a preference, whether it's the Masterbuilt Gravity Series or the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro, we want to get some outside opinion. So I'm actually having my family over for dinner tonight. So behind the cameras, I have several family members who are going to be trying this and they don't know which one is which. They don't know the whole story other than they're supposed to be giving me some feedback from one to the other. So let's go ahead and get these unwrapped. And I can tell you they are super, super moist. Now, if you recall, I talked about that Wagyu beef towel and how we would be saving it for later. Now, obviously we used it when we wrapped it to wet the paper and to give a nice wet finish to these ribs, but we've been smoking this for hours. I actually left it on the smoker even while we wrapped it. And I'm just gonna drizzle that Wagyu tallow over these beef ribs. Now I know which ones are which but I'm gonna give you my honest feedback. I'm not bought and paid for by any particular company, but if any companies are out there willing to, just kidding, I would never do that. It 
it's time to cut into these beef ribs. Now, I know which ones they are, but my guests do not. And holy cow, are those tender. Look at that. Nice smoke ring, super freaking tender. I mean, that knife just glides right through. Now that right there is some good looking brisket on a stick. We're gonna call this front one, one, and this back one, two. So right now, I've got some of number one, and I'm gonna cut a few slices off. So we're on the ones and the twos. Everybody's gonna try that. Those are seasoned the same. We use the same hardwood in there to smoke them. One or two, and why? Now I want you to think about the bark. I want you to think about the texture. I want you to think about that flavor that comes along with it. Well, let me, let me give my opinion here. So here's number one. Very tasty, very moist. The seasoning on there is perfection. It is not too salty. It is not too peppery. It is not too anything. It is very savory and it is absolutely delicious. Now on to number two. Mm. They are distinctly different. So number one is the master built. Number two is the camp chef. Now I will disagree with the crowd on the bark. The bark on the camp chef is far superior to the master built. It has got that deep, rich, dark, meteor finish that you would expect on a brisket. We got much deeper color, we got much darker color than we did on the Master Boat. Now granted, they are both delicious and honestly, they're very hard to tell apart because they are both extremely tasty. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you here and say that this is such a close, such a close battle between the two grills to the point where most people, even if you're familiar with the grills and you've cooked on both of them, I think you would honestly have a hard time saying which one came from which. The Camp Chef produced a richer, deeper, more meteor-like bark, while the Master Built didn't. But you taste more of a smoky flavor from the Master Built than you do the Camp Chef. But when I say more, we're talking just a slight, slight little bit of a difference. The one thing that I can say about this Camp Chef Woodwind Pro is it is the closest thing to a charcoal smoker in terms of taste and presentation that I've seen to date. Prior to this, pellet grills always sort of had a little lack behind a charcoal smoker like the Masterbuilt Gravity Series. But today, now that I've seen them side by side, I can honestly tell you that I don't believe many people could even tell the difference or tell me which one came off of which. So what I'm gonna do for the rest of this summer is I'm gonna do experiments on these grills on the Master Built Gravity Series and the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. And we're gonna try and nail down which one is better and why, and maybe it even depends on what we're cooking. So go ahead, get in the comments, tell me what you'd like to see me compare because this experiment went extremely well. Now we're gonna to wanna to see what some others do too. If you like this video and you like what I've got on this channel, then I suggest you check out this one right here. Thank you.